for logging on and welcome to your Knowledge Week webinar. Today is the update on new tax and super laws. I'm Eric and I'll be your moderator today. Uh, presenting today are two Walters Kluwer CCH tax editors, Mary Zachariah and Ed Carr. Mary, Mary has been with us for five years now. Prior to this, she was a tax consultant in a mid-tier firm in Sydney and with KPMG in Kuala Lumpur. Ed has been a tax editor since 1999, with previous roles including a corporate tax advisor and a tax consultant in one of the big accounting firms. You can submit questions via the questions tab at any time throughout the webinar, so please feel free to do that and we will try to address it as quickly as possible. So I think we're ready to go. Mary and Ed, over to you. Hi everyone. Our Treasurer, Scott Morrison, handed down his budget as Treasurer last May. And within a few days, the Prime Minister announced the double dissolution election, which he narrowly won on 2nd of July. The 2016 budget contained a number of significant tax measures, including tax cuts for companies and small business, changes to superannuation, and new measures to combat multinational tax avoidance. We have now had four weeks of parliamentary sittings. The government has been busy with tax and super measures. It has introduced a number of bills into parliament, as well as issued some draft legislation and discussion papers for comment. Hi, everyone. We're not going to cover every budget announcement today. There are many of them, and our budget night report in the CCH Tax Week newsletter contains a full report. Also, the Master Tax Guide and the CCH Tax Monitor have up-to-date progress of the budget measures. The uh, government has introduced bills for the tax cuts for companies and small business. Uh, they're in the House of Representatives, and they're still being debated. The government is negotiating with crossbench senators to get them passed. The small personal tax cut for individuals applying from 1 July 2016 has been passed and is now law. The government has issued uh, draft legislation covering almost all of the changes to super announced in the budget. Some of the budget measures were contentious and the government has abandoned some of them or made significant changes. The draft legislation reflects the changes from the original announcements. Several other measures from the 2016 budget and some, some of them from other sources have not moved, uh, have moved through Parliament in the spring sittings and are now law. The list includes tax incentives for investments uh, in innovation companies, changes to venture capital investment funding, the small business restructure rollover, a cut in the R&D refundable tax offsets for large companies, the single touch payroll reporting framework and tobacco excise increases. But there are still many tax measures announced in the budget for which we have not seen any detail as yet, either in the form of a bill or draft legislation. These include the multinational tax avoidance arrangements, um, changes to improve Div 7A, and various other amendments to tax consolidation, TOFA, and asset backed financing. An interesting one to watch also is the announcement to improve protection for whistleblowers disclosing information to the ATO about tax avoidance. Now we would like to talk about three key areas of the budget and where they are at. The tax cuts, the super changes and the multinational tax avoidance measures. As part of its jobs and growth policy to support business investment, the government proposed tax cuts for business through a phased reduction of the corporate tax rate. From the current 30 or 28.5% for small business, the rate would eventually be reduced to 25% within 10 years. To accompany these tax cuts, the rate of the small business tax offset or discount, which is available for unincorporated small business, would also be increased progressively. This offset was introduced in the previous budget 
that when the rate for small business companies was first reduced to 28.5%. Thirdly, to expand access to the lower corporate tax rate and to other existing small business concessions, an increase of the small business entity turnover threshold from 2 million to 10 million has been proposed as well. And finally, to address concerns of bracket creep, a reduced individual marginal tax rate was proposed for incomes between 8 The proposed company tax rate cuts would happen in two phases. In the first phase, a tax rate of 27.5% would apply, depending on a company's annual aggregate turnover. For example, in 2016-17, a rate of 27.5% would be accessible for companies with a turnover of less than $10 million. The 30% rate would continue to apply to other companies. And over the following seven years, access to this 27.5% would be expanded in stages to larger businesses via greater turnover threshold as shown in the table, meaning by 2023-24, all companies will be on 27.5%. The second phase of the tax cuts would be across the board annual cuts for all companies reaching 25% by 2026-27. So with the prospect of a reduced corporate tax rate, one aspect to consider is the impact on franking of distributions by the company. Although a two-tier tax rate is currently in place with the 30 and 28.5%, the imputation system continues to operate at the rate of 30%. This means the maximum franking credits that can be distributed to shareholders is based on a 30% rate. However, with the staged reduction of the rates over 10 years, the operation of the imputation system is also proposed to be changed, meaning franking of distributions will be based on the company's corporate tax rate for the particular income year, meaning it will also depend on turnover threshold. So from 2016-17, the applicable rate for imputation purposes for a particular income year is worked out having regard to the aggregate turnover for the previous income year. This being to cater for companies that will make distributions during an income year and may not know their applicable tax rate until after the year ends. So a closer eye may also be kept on companies that are potentially affected by changes in the tax rate year on year, either due to their turnover being close to particular thresholds because of expected continued growth in turnover. And subject to cash flow and anti-avoidance rules, of course, changing tax rates from one year to the next could offer some planning opportunities, such as deferring income to the following year or making deductible purchases by year end before the lower rate kicks in. During the first phase of tax cuts, business businesses with significant movements in their turnovers may find themselves moving between rates. A closer look at the definition of annual aggregate turnover in section 328-115 of the 1997 Act may also be required. So given the proposed progressive reduction in the corporate tax rate, it was also proposed that the small business tax offset or tax discount be increased over the 10-year period. The current rate is 5% and capped at $1,000. It is proposed to be increased to 8% from 1 July 2016 and progressively increased to 16% over the 10-year period as shown here. The offset will still be capped at $1,000. Another change is that the turnover threshold to access the discount will be increased from 2 million to 5 million. And staying with the small business turnover threshold, an increase to this threshold has been proposed from the current 2 million to 10 million to take effect from 1 July 2016. This means 
businesses with a turnover between 2 million and 10 million will now have access to the small business concessions they previously did not have. Apart from the lower corporate tax rate, these businesses will also have access to simplified depreciation rules, such as instant asset write-offs and general small business pools, simplified trading stock rules, PAYG installment processes, the option to account for GST on a cash basis, and various other concessions that small businesses currently enjoy. One thing to note, however, is that um, this change in threshold does not affect access to the small business CGT concessions. This continues to be accessible only for businesses with an annual turnover of less than $2 million or that satisfy the existing net asset value test of $6 million. The three proposals for business tax cuts have been introduced in a bill and it's currently before the lower house. These measures are rather contentious and there is some resistance against certain parts of the proposals, particularly the tax cuts for larger businesses and raising the turnover thresholds for small businesses. So what this means is there is a possibility that these measures may be amended or they are at risk of being rejected as they currently stand. So this is certainly a space to keep watching and we have another three weeks of parliamentary sittings left in 2016. Finally, the measure to cut the individual marginal tax rate for incomes between 80 and 87,000 has been enacted and it's now law. Meaning from 2016-17, an individual's taxable income between 80,000 and 87,000 will be subject to the lower rate of 32.5% rather than the current 37% which applies. This effectively gives a maximum tax cut of $315 per year for incomes of $87,000 and above. Thanks very much, Mary. Uh, now we turn to the government's changes to superannuation. That's a topic close to the heart of uh, quite a lot of people, including those who are approaching retirement. The budget super changes were designed to make the retirement savings system more affordable by trimming back some of the generous tax benefits. In May, Scott Morrison uh, said the changes would disadvantage only the wealthiest Australians, leaving 96% no worse off. However, the government has significantly abandoned um, or changed some of the measures. The government has released drafts of the super legislation. After the consultation period, the uh, drafts will be introduced into Parliament and that could be um, as early as next month, November. Um, there were many changes announced in the budget, but I'm just going to focus on some of the most important ones. The first is the transfer balance cap. The government will introduce a transfer balance cap from 1 July 2017. The cap limits the total amount that a super fund member can transfer into, their, into a tax-free pension phase account at retirement. Limiting the amount in the tax-free pension phase will save money for the government. In the 2017-18 tax year, the cap will be $1.6 million but it will be indexed um, in later years. The cap will look like this. An individual's personal transfer balance cap will come into existence when they first become entitled to a pension. You will need to keep an account called the transfer balance, balance account. It will record credits for amounts tra transferred in and debits for amounts commuted or rolled over. To work out the cap, you will You'll be able to ignore earnings and capital growth on assets supporting the pensions. Members with superannuation account balances greater than $1.6 million will be forced to transfer excess amounts out of the pension phase and possibly back into the accumulation phase. The annual cap will be indexed. A member's personal cap will also be linked, indexed subject to a proportioning formula. This is uh, a big new change, particularly uh, the need to keep the transfer balance account and monitor the, the retiree's personal balance cap and make sure that it's uh, not exceeded each year. The non-concessional contributions cap is going to be lowered. 
the existing annual cap on non-concessional contributions will be reduced from $180,000 to $100,000 from 1 July 2017. The bring forward rule will stay. That's the rule allowing individuals under 65 to bring forward three years of non-concessional contributions into one year. This measure replaces the original budget proposal back in May for a lifetime non-concessional contributions cap of $500,000. That cap would have taken into account all non-concessional contributions made on or after 1 July 2007. That plan has been abandoned after very strong objections to it. Note that the current higher contributions cap still applies for the 2016-17 year. That's the year we're currently in. That means there is an opportunity to make a larger non-concessional contribution before the new rules kick in. The annual cap on concessional contributions will be reduced to, from 1 July 2017, the annual cap on concessional contributions will be reduced to $25,000. Currently the caps are $30,000 for uh, people under age 50 and $35,000 for people aged 50 and over. So for the, the 50s and over, the cap will drop by $10,000 a year. Uh, and that'll put a dent in the plans of those approaching retirement and wanting to save money uh, more, more by salary sacrifice. Next, the, the government will ease restrictions on personal super contribution deductions. Most uh, individuals up to age 75 with some exceptions, will be allowed to claim an income tax deduction for personal super contributions. Effectively, this will allow all individuals, regardless of their employment situation, um, to, um, to uh, make concessional contributions um, up to the concessional cap. That will benefit individuals who are partly self-employed and partly salary owners and individuals whose employers do not offer salary sacrifice. The next super item is that the catch-up super contributions um, proposal is going to be delayed. The budget included a new measure allowing people with a disrupted employment history to make catch-up super contributions but it'll be delayed by one year and will start for un unused amounts accrued from the 1st of July 2018. The measure is intended to benefit people with low balances or uninterrupted or interrupted work patterns. The way it works is that if you don't use up your concessional contributions cap in an earlier year, the unused amount can be carried forward to boost the cap in a later year. But the measure will only apply to unused amounts from 1 July 2018. In other super measures, the transition to retirement concession will be tightened up from the 1st of July 2017 by taxing the earnings of assets supporting the income stream. Previously the earnings could be tax free. The threshold for paying additional contributions tax for high income earners will be lowered from $300,000 to $250,000 from uh, the start of next year, that is 1st of July 2017. That was uh, used to be known as the um, excess contributions uh, tax or, or the surcharge for high income earners. An offset to reduce tax on super contributions for low income earners will be introduced from the 1st of July 2017 and from that date uh, the income threshold for low-income spouse top tax offset will be increased from $10,800 to $37,000. A full list of the tax and super announcements are in the May budget and their current status is found in our CCH Australian Tax Monitor product. Thank you, Ed, for the update on the superannuation changes. We now move on to the last topic, which is about changes affecting multinationals. A number of tax measures targeting multinational tax avoidance were announced in the budget. Some of these measures seek to adopt recommendations made by the OECD as part of its ongoing base erosion profit shifting or BEPS project. 
as we speak, these measures are all still announcements and the government has not introduced a bill into Parliament or released any draft legislation on the same. So with the global focus on multinational tax avoidance continuing, the Treasurer announced a diverted profits tax, or what is popularly known as the Google tax. The diverted profits tax is modelled on a similar measure enacted in the UK in 2015. It is a 40% tax on profits of multinationals which are artif artificially diverted from Australia. It will only apply to entities that are significant global entities, which are defined as entities with a global income of at least $1 billion. The government expects the diverted profits tax to operate where existing rules and anti-avoidance law are difficult to apply and where a taxpayer fails to cooperate with the commissioner during the audit process. The tax is targeted towards transactions that give rise to a tax mismatch and where the transaction has been designed to secure this mismatch. And a mismatch is usually where lower income tax is paid in Australia, but higher income tax is paid overseas by a related entity. The, it is proposed that the diverted profits tax will apply from 1 July 2017. It is also proposed to amend the transfer pricing rules in Div 815 of the 1997 Act to incorporate changes to the OECD's transfer pricing guidelines, particularly those relating to intellectual property and other intangibles, as well as the allocation of risk. This will bring Australia's domestic transfer pricing rules in line with the latest OECD policies. The Treasurer has also announced that penalties on multinationals for failure to lodge tax documents or in relation to making statements to the ATO would be increased significantly from 1 July 2017. The maximum penalty for failure to lodge documents to the ATO will be increased 100-fold to 450,000 for significant global entities. The penalties relating to making statements will also be doubled. And the last one is the Treasurer announced that the date for implementing OECD recommendations for eliminating hybrid mismatch arrangements will be 1 January 2018. Hybrid mismatch arrangements are essentially arrangements that take advantage of different tax treatments of an entity or instrument in two or more tax jurisdictions to result in either double non-taxation or double deductions or the long-term deferral of income. This recommendation came out of OECD's Action 2 in its BEPS Action Plan. So we'll have to wait to see uh, some legislation on those multinational measures. So as we hit the halfway mark in the spring sittings of Parliament this year, we see that the new government has made a strong start in implementing its tax and superannuation agenda. Many of the tax and super measures announced in the May budget are in bills going through Parliament. Some of them have become law and some, like the super measures, are in the form of draft legislation. Yes, so we are still waiting for further details on other budget announcements, such as the multinational tax avoidance measures and some specific changes to Division 7A rules. And just as a reminder, the tax cuts for companies and small business are contentious. The government is negotiating their passage with the crossbench senators, so the future of those measures is uncertain. Well, that concludes our update on tax and super, new tax and super laws. Thanks very much for listening in today, and we are happy to take any questions from you. So it appears we have no questions from the webinar. We'll just give uh, about a minute for people to submit questions. And while we, whilst we wait, I just want to thank our presenters today. Uh, for such a comprehensive uh, update on what's happening with tax super as well as what's happening in the multinational space. Um, if you do have any questions, you can follow up with us afterwards. And if we didn't have we didn't have a chance to answer any questions, we'll follow up via email or phone. Um, so that will bring our webinar to a close. Thank you everyone for attending. We had a full house, and thank you for staying along as well. And you all have a good day now. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye.
Bye.